Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes. Hello, everybody. I'm Gloria Copeland, and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Our fun guest is back, Billy Brim. She's got some exciting things to share with us. Billy, we welcome you. Thank you very much, We're Glow. We're so glad you're here. Well, I'm glad to be and here. We're all ears. Bless the Lord, Gloria. You know, uh, you and I were talking just before we went on the air about Brother Hagen, which we yeah. often do, because the Lord brought us there at the same time, April 1967, to those seminars where I received the Holy mm -hmm. Ghost, and you and Ken came over. That was and, big. Oh my goodness, what He's meant to our life! I hardly go a day without saying. Uh, to God, I thank you for taking me yeah. to hear Kenneth E. Hagin teach. And uh, when I was brought in with a baptism in the Holy Spirit, um, it was charismatic days. And really, to tell you the truth, the truth in some of that, those people coming in from denominations and charismatic days, sometimes they brought some error. And some funny things would happen, you know, when they there was this magazine teaching, um, oh, how about heavy submission? Women, you know, just couldn't couldn't even pray. I didn't like that much. Oh my goodness, no. <laughs> so anyway, that's a uh, and, and there were other things, you know, a church government not going to have pastors anymore, and all kinds of crazy stuff. But thank God, He brought me, 1967. He brought me at the feet of Brother Hagen, this teacher. And we came at the same. You time. came at the same time, this teacher. And if you listen to Ken Copeland, because at the first, Ken Copeland just taught. Brother Hagin's sermons even use the same titles. So in 19, we got a really good grounding in oh, the Word of Praise God, God, the truth of the Word. So um, I came to work for Brother Hagin three years later in 1970. And from 1970 until 1980, I was the editor of publications. Uh, Brother Hagin had been charged by the Lord uh, to put your teachings into print. He said, it's the printed page is still the best way to spread the gospel. And so um, I worked for him and got that good teaching. And I was there. I learned how to pray. I learned how to hear God. I watched him. God. He that said that he said awesome that he blessing. made it. Yes, he made it his aim that he could know the voice of the Lord better than he knew the voice of his wife or his family. So I learned how to uh, follow God and Praise hear God. the voice of the Lord. And one day I heard the voice of the Lord say to me, in my position as editor of publications. For Brother Hagen. For Brother Hagen. He said, I want you to take Brother Hagen's teachings, and he said, I want you to put them in bite-sized pieces and put them together in a, in a year's format, 365, 66 days, and I want you to call it faith food for people to feed their spirits, and I'll help you do it. Bite-sized pieces. So what I would take would be Brother Hagin's teaching, let's say, on the name of Jesus. And I, as I worked with it, they're all Brother Hagin's words, but he helped me to arrange it in the bite-sized pieces. And you know, Bosworth, who uh, wrote Christ the Healer, then I use this for the preface. F.F. F. Bosworth said, most Christians feed their bodies three hot meals a day and their spirits one cold snack a week. And then they wonder why they are so weak in faith. So yep. feed your faith daily. Mm -hmm. It is of utmost importance to, to your walk with the Lord. I've written these bite-sized pieces of faith food to aid you in making sure your faith is fed daily. Study and say the confessions found at the bottom of each page and tells how to do it. And so uh, I started in the spring when I did the first one was going to come out, we did them four little parts, faith food for spring, yep. faith food for summer. And then we finally got a now year. You wrote I, I, I put them together. I From actually Brother used Hagen's his work. lessons. And by this time, I mean, I've been doing this for years. So I don't use my own words. I just take his words, put them down to bite-sized pieces, pieces and put them in here. And I know uh, that one time a uh, management at uh, Kenneth Hagin Ministry said, well, we need to come out with a new one every year. And the Lord said, no, you don't. These are, these are his teachings in the different categories and subjects. And by the time you finish a year in this, you've got a really good Bible education. And then I read it myself. And when I read it myself, I forget that I'm the one that put it, that paragraph on that page. So 
This week and next week, we're going to talk about something from a lot of different angles. But we're going to talk about the fact that man is a spirit made in the image of God, that he contacts God with his spirit. He believes with his spirit. He hears with his spirit. And he's three parts. He is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. What must happen now for us as you grow? And we're going to be looking to at the book, Growing Up Spiritually. You're born again a baby and you grow by feeding on the word of God. So I'm starting here on, this is June 1st in the little faith food book. And uh, I'll just begin reading from here and then we'll go off from there. He's quoting John 4, 23 and, 20, and uh, 24. When Jesus had gone down to the city of Samaria, he, was, he had gone through uh, Samaria and he met the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. You remember her? Yep. And his uh, disciples had gone off to get food. Now, he gives a revelation to a woman, a Samaritan woman at the well that really hadn't been given before. It's just amazing how Jesus would do. Mm. So he says to her, she asked him a question. I've been to the Samaritan village myself. The Samaritans are still there. And the Samaritans receive, they have, they're a kind of a people that moved into the Israel area uh, during the time when Nehemiah was building the wall. And they adopted the religion, kind of, Judaism, kind of, but they take only the first five books. And they uh, believe that they're supposed to worship in the mountain of Samaria. Today, that city of Samaria is Nablus. It's a very uh, hostile to Israel city hmm. in Israel. But it, in, at this time, the city of Samaria, now Nablus. And so this woman is there at the well. And one of their big things is with the Samaritans, um, they believe you should worship on that mountain. The mountain, it's the mountain of blessing. You know how the Bible has the mountain of cursing and the mountain of blessing? They believe you should worship there. Still do. And there's only a few of them left because they don't marry outside their own group. There's only so a few like, of them left. what would you say? Oh, I say 500. Only 500 of them left. And uh, when Jesus was going through there, he sits on the, he sits on the well and, he, and she says, he asked her for water. And she said, why do you, a Jew, ask me for water? Because the Jews didn't have any love loss for the Samaritans and vice versa. And he said, if you'd known, you'd ask me for the living water and I'd give it to you. So then um, he says this to her. The hour cometh because she said, which mountain we're supposed to worship on? Jews worship on Moria, the Temple Mount. Samaritans worshiped on the Mount of Blessing. So she got two physical mountains here and she says, which one we're supposed to worship on? He says, the hour comes and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship Him. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Worship. True worship only comes from the Spirit. So I'm reading here from Brother Hagin. God is a spirit. Spiritual things are more real than material things. They have to be because God, who is a spirit, created all material things. That's right. The unseen realm that we don't see is more real than what we do see. We don't see the angels. You, They're everywhere we go. They're here. Can you see them? Nope. Nope. But you know they're there. And Gloria, they're more real. And they're active. And they're active. And wherever you are in your house, right now, wherever you're sitting, angels are there. 
There's no telling how many times the angels have saved our lives that we, we don't even know about. We didn't even realize we were in danger. No. And they're in that spirit realm. They're in the more real realm. Yeah, that's right. Powerful. This is a material realm. It's all going to pass away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we have angels. This is not our subject today, but I'm going to throw this in. Well, it kind of is. We have angels that are assigned to us. When we get born again, we have angels that are assigned to us to help us, to protect us. And maybe, do you think before even you got born again, there were angels, uh, the angels had charge over you even when, before In, in you my mother's heaven. womb? Yeah, and from then And on. before, oh, sure. Now, here's what the Jews say about that glow. I think they're right. They say that every man on earth at his new birth is assigned to angels. I believe that. Because the Bible, it says, it is written in the word every that- Every man. Every man. Heathen and every man. every man. It is written in the Bible that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. And the Jews say that at the end, at the judgment seat, and if you're a new birth, you meet it at a different time, but whenever, they give a witness of your life. They are the witnesses of your life. But they're a part of that spirit realm. God's a spirit. Yeah. Angels are spirits. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I am a spirit. And they're, they're called ministering spirits. Ministering spirits. You're a spirit. I'm a spirit. But I have a body. You, ha you live a in a body right body. now. But you are a spirit. That's right. You are a spirit. And we need to learn to think like that. Now, this is, this, we, we, Billy and I are off in territory. We never dreamed we'd be off in today. But when you, sit, when you die, Yes. Your spirit leaves your body. Yes. That's why you're dead. That's right. And the body's just plumped down there. But if you're born again, you go up to God. If you're not born again, guess what? So that's why it's so important. We want to go up. Glory to God. That's right. You, you must do something about your spiritual state. Like, well, I don't know if I'm born again. Well, we'll deal with that at the end of the broadcast. Just don't go away. Right. Hallelujah. Absolutely. We'll give you a chance to do it. Oh, isn't that good, Billy? And that we have angels assigned to us to help us. No telling how many times they've saved us that we never even knew we were in danger. See, I'm so glad that we're aware of that spirit world. Yeah. Amen. And we know to thank God for it. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is a spirit. Spiritual things are more real than material things. God, who is a spirit, created all material things. God's unseen ability brought into being everything we know upon the earth in the natural realm by simply saying, let there be light, trees. So we have a wood table. You cannot know God or touch God or become acquainted with God physically. You cannot know God or touch God, or communicate with God mentally. God is a spirit, and you can reach Him with your spirit. Your human spirit can come to know God. Your spirit can become acquainted with God. Your spirit can communicate with God. Your spirit can worship God. And should do all of those things. Your spirit should do all of those things. And you know, Gloria, when you grow, we're going to talk about growing up spiritually. People think it's maybe wrong to say, God told me this, God told me that. And sometimes it is, and people are flaky and off the wall when they say it. But you can come to a place where your spirit, mm -hmm. you have fed your spirit, it's you it's meditate, educated on, you educated word. it in the Word, and you hear Him in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to get into some exciting well, we did, things. You learn to depend on that. Yes. That inward Should witness sometimes. Should I do that? Should I not go? Should I not go? Absolutely. And then sometimes, Gloria, that's Should the inward I marry witness. This man? Yeah. <laughs> Which is a Boy, it'd be a good decision. thing if people will pay a lot attention of on that. I didn't pray about that enough. <laughs> but then uh, you can, when you grow in the Spirit and you meditate on the Word of God, you can, 
you can hear him. He'll carry on conversations with you on the inside. And you can hear him on the inside with conversations back and forth. I noticed Kenny was preaching out here in a tent meeting and he's preaching a lot of wrong, right along and the Lord just interrupts him. Oh, you want me to say that, Lord? Well, where do you think he heard that? He didn't hear it with these ears. No, he heard it in the spirit. He heard it in that spirit. Because mm -hmm. I know Kenneth Copeland, you do too. He meditates the word of God. That's right. he, he communicates with God in prayer. Spirit to spirit. Bless the Lord. Now, as you, this, this, this is not what Billy and I intended to do today, but let me just throw it. It all fits. As you grow up in God and in the Word, you grow up in the Word, you, you, you begin to do what it says, and you keep feeding your spirit, as Brother Hagin used to, I believe he used to say, educating your spirit on the Word of God. You know, you get to where you can hear Him. And, and you know, and you know also, you know, if you hear something that's not in line with this Word, it's not God. Like, you're going to die or something, you know, Isn't whatever. that the truth? You can tell so when the that, devil tries so to put a thought that in there. That, that, if, you be, if you begin to hear things like, uh, you're not going to live out your full days. You're going to die young. You know, that's not God. Because it, it's in the Word that we can live strong and live long if we'll serve Him. That's where long life is. So it's, it's important. This is what I'm talking about. Yep. Exactly what you said, Gloria. This is it. This is what we're talking about for these two weeks. We're going to be talking about this inward man. This yep. man, the Bible calls him the inner man of the heart. He's a man. He's the new creature. Yes, he, and he, he's living inside you. He is you. He that is you. That is you. And when you leave the earth, you leave your body. Yeah, you. <laughs> And your body has no life about it. Praise but the Lord. you, if you're born again, you're in the glory in heaven. If you're not born again, there's only two alternatives to this. One is up and one is down. That's why you need to be sure that you've made Jesus the Lord of your life. This is, this is all <laughs> Billy and I aren't on a subject yet. I don't yeah, think, well, this is the subject. Good. This is the subject, the inner man. But that's true. And the spirit realm. This that's is the subject. You, that's how you go to the right place. See, when you get born again, you become an eternal spirit. You are an eternal spirit when you're born, period. Well, yeah, but and you, when you're yes. born again, born you become again, eternal, eternal spirit, spirit in the life with the life of God. Yeah. Now, we're talking about man being a spirit. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. Praise God. In the image of God createth he him. And then we're going to read Psalm 149, 4. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. If man is made in the likeness of God and God is a spirit, then man of a necessity must be a spirit. God made man for his own pleasure. He made man to fellowship with him. Man is not an animal. Man is in the same class with God, otherwise he couldn't fellowship with God. Did you ever try to fellowship with a cow? Cows are in a different kingdom than you are. They're in a different class. You can't fellowship with them. But we can fellowship with one another and we can fellowship with God because we are in the same class of being as God. God is a spirit. And man created in the image and likeness of God is also a spirit being. We are made in the image and likeness of God. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 tells us that we are a spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. And I'm going to talk more about that later. But in this, we're talking about worship and fellowship right now. One time, I think it was uh, Mama Goodman. Papa and Mama Goodwin, they went, they were pastors of Assemblies of God Church in Pasadena, Texas for years. Great friends of Brother Hagin. Gifts of the Spirit operated in that church. She was very, she was sitting up on the platform. It was either her or Sister Wilkerson. I can't remember which. And there were a huge crowd of people out there. And they were worshiping God, singing and praising. And either one of those two women, I can't remember which, said, Oh, Lord, look at the people worshiping you. He said, I'm going to show you something. And he let her see into the spirit realm. 
It was Sister Wilkerson. Yes, it was Sister Wilkerson. And she saw out there in the crowd just a few people with lights inside them going up to heaven. And every once in a while, somebody else, their lights would turn on. He said, now they're the ones that are worshiping me. They're the ones that their mm. spirits are fellowshipping me and worshiping me. The others are worshiping out of their intellect or out of their body. Sometimes they're just singing songs, mm -hmm. you know. And you can tell, I can tell, I know you can tell too. If you go into what's called, quote unquote, a worship service, whether that worship service is coming from the spirit or whether it's coming kind of from the body mm -hmm. or, or even the mind, God says that he's seeking those. We're going to talk yes, a lot about right. God seeking. Mm -hmm. God is seeking those. His eyes are going through all the earth That's looking the at hearts. Yeah. And he's seeking those who will worship him in spirit. If you will learn to worship God out of your spirit and communicate with him in your spirit, he's looking for you. You won't have to beg him to show up and answer your prayer. I don't, I don't know if we've got enough time. I, I don't know what our time is, but one minute we got. That's what the devil's doing. He goes oh, yeah. about seeking whom he, he may devour. There's a hunt on for both of us. And from, God goes about seeking whom he may bless. And you get to choose which one you follow. That's right. Glory to God. I'm following God. Yes. And, and, and you, can, you can so feed your spirit and worship Him in the Spirit. Oh, it's such a life. Oh, and it's, like, it's like night and day. It's life or death and death. You know it's what life I mean? and it's, death. This, we're, we're talking to you this week about some great things that'll help you. Billy and I'll be right back. We hope you enjoyed this teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes.